daughter of the patient in 806. He is at the moment comatose and requires intravenous feeding and meds. When your life is in someone else's hands, he better know what the hell he's doing. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie doctors. For this list, we're focusing on doctors in feature films who make an indelible impression and practice some form of medicine. However, no mad scientists need apply because they've got their own list of the top 10 mad scientists. Number 10, Doc Holliday, Tombstone. Must be a peach of a hand. Everybody wants to avoid the dentist. Whatever do you mean? That's something the no-good varmints in the OK Corral should have thought about. Val Kilmer's Doc Holliday in Tombstone is more a gunslinger than a doctor, but he's a keeper. And as a dentist, we have to assume he has a medical degree, right? Well, thank you, darling. A little foppish and prone to having conversations in Latin, he still proves he's got cojones. It's a startling, unforgettable interpretation of this real-life historical character. Let's not bother about the luggage. Number 9. Nicholas Garrigan, the last king of Scotland. Do you want to be of service to Uganda, Dr. Garrigan? Yes, I do. Then what better way than to look after the head of its president? And let me tell you, it will not be a difficult job. Nicholas Garrigan starts this film as a young, idealistic doctor. Chosen to become the personal physician for Idi Amin, he refuses to see the dictator's brutality for too long. You should have told me not to throw the Asians out in the first place. I begged, but you did not persuade me, Nicholas. You did not persuade me. But once he acknowledges Amin's inhumanity, Garrigan becomes resolute in his efforts to escape and to let the world know of his crimes. Garrigan's blend of human kindness and professional opportunism make him a memorably complex character. I'm his doctor. It's not my job to judge the man. I'm his doctor. Is that your defense, hypothetic? F off, Garrigan. Number eight, Dr. Herbert Herb Bach, the hospital. Now what in hell am I gonna tell this boy Shaver's parents? That a substitute nurse assassinated him because she couldn't tell the doctors from the patients on the floor? My God! The incompetence here is absolutely radiant. Patty Chayefsky's black look at an inner city hospital in a perpetual state of chaos is anchored by George C. Scott's towering performance as Dr. Herbert Bach. The chief of medicine for the hospital, Bach's marriage is dying and his children are estranged. I left her a dozen times. She left me a dozen times. We stayed together through a process of attrition, obviously sadomasochistic dependency. But nothing will keep him from fighting for his medical center. Half the time you're a perfectly intelligent young woman, and then all of a sudden you turn into some kind of goddamn cabalist who believes in dreams and witchcraft and bear power. Bach may be a pain in the ass at times, but his heart is always in the right place. I'm not going. Hospital is coming apart. I can't walk out on them. It's coming apart. Someone has to be responsible, Bob. Number seven, Dr. Luther Brooks, No Way Out. Would you like one putting his dirty black hands on you? Sidney Poitier made his feature film debut as Dr. Luther Brooks in No Way Out and immediately caused a sensation. Well, how does it feel? The reaction hasn't set in yet. Like a woman who's just had a baby, I won't believe it until I see it. Brooks is a perfect Poitier character, an idealistic yet practical young intern fighting against racism with dignity and honor. I'm trying to help your brother, why don't you just shut up? You watch yourself, black boy, watch how you talk to me. Just shut up. At the end, Brooks even saves the life of a man who has tried to kill him and destroy his career. He's just that honorable. Don't cry, white boy. You're gonna live. Number six, Dr. Hunter Patch Adams, Patch Adams. My name is Dr. Phil. I'll be your surgeon. Robin Williams' turn as real-life Dr. Leonard Lowe in Awakenings was a fine job of acting, but he was really born to play the title role in Patch Adams. A former patient from a mental institution, Adams becomes a doctor to use his unique sense of humor to help the ill. And the American Journal of Medicine has found that laughter increases secretion of catecholamines and endorphins 
which in turn increases oxygenation of the blood, relaxes the arteries, speeds up the heart, decreases blood pressure, which has a positive effect on all cardiovascular and respiratory ailments, as well as overall increasing the immune system response. Smart clown, eh? And Adams is the kind of doctor who believes the patient-doctor bond is all about friendship and connection. And patients adore him almost as much as movie viewers do. Dean Walcott, in the future, I think matters like this could best be solved if you yourself would practice a little excessive happiness. Number five, Dr. Malcolm Crow, The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. Many of our favorite film doctors sacrifice their personal lives to help their patients. You just give me a chance. <laughs> but Malcolm Crow of The Sixth Sense takes it to an extreme. Malcolm is so wrapped up in helping his latest patient, a little kid who thinks he can talk to the dead, that he can't engage his wife in a real dialogue. Anna, I know that I've been a little distant. I, I know that it makes you mad. I just feel like I'm being given a second chance and I don't want it to slip away. Happy anniversary. Turns out there's a reason for this, one which makes the audience have an even greater fondness for the good doc. Needed to help someone. I think I did. Number four, Dr. Yuri Zhivago, Dr. Zhivago. Yes, Dr. Zhivago, he came third in all Moscow. Yuri Zhivago is both a Russian physician and a poet and as played by Omar Sharif in Dr. Zhivago, he is the embodiment of every woman's ultimate romantic fantasy. Dr. Zhivago is betrothed in marriage to... He also knows his medicine and has great bedside manner. As a doctor, we mean. Amazingly, male viewers don't feel jealous of Yuri, presumably because they think he's just exactly the kind of doctor they'd be. Not liked. Not liked by whom? Why not liked? Number three, Frederick Treves, the Elephant Man. <coughs> John Merrick, the physically misshapen title character of the Elephant Man, lived a life as a freak before being rescued by Dr. Frederick Treves. Um, have you always been the way you are now? Treves, portrayed by Anthony Hopkins, is a multi-layered character. Of course I appreciate your concern. I appreciate everything that you've done for Mr. Merrick. Thank you. But I am the physician in charge, I and I must do what I think is best for him. Clinical and reserved, he develops a real affection for Merrick and feels shame and guilt at the realization that he is using and exploiting the man for his own ends. Not a touchy-feely sort, Treves is nevertheless a man of commendable honor and insight. I can't tell you how sorry I am for what happened. See, I had no idea. Really. Please, you, you mustn't blame yourself. Mr. Trees, don't worry about me, my friend. I am happy every hour of the day. Number two, Dr. Jack McKee, the doctor. There's nothing natural about surgery. You're cutting open someone's body. Is that natural? One day you'll have your hands around someone's heart, and it's beating. And you'll think, uh-oh, I shouldn't be here. At the beginning of The Doctor, Jack McKee is a jerk, plain and simple. Tell your husband you look like a Playboy centerfold. You have the staple marks to prove it. <laughs> An enormously successful surgeon, he is self-centered and ultimately uncaring towards his family and his patients. Oh! Hi, Dad! Special live appearance! But after he himself experiences life as a patient, he undergoes a transformation and emerges as the uber doctor of our dreams. Kind, compassionate, fiercely devoted, and genuinely involved. And not too shabby with a scalpel either. It's a beautiful heart. Before we diagnose our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Henceforth, you shall be little Dorrit. No, you don't like that, do you? He's a boy, that's why. Kind of boy, be a darn. I don't think so. Bend over, take three wax, and let's cut to the info. It doesn't quite work that way. Okay. The tricky part is. Uh, is what? Not getting my skull cracked in the process. Well, uh, Claire Niveau, this is my brother Elliot. 
Hi, Claire. I hope Bev's told you what a big fan I am of your movies. No member of the Vale family has ever had a nervous breakdown. Well, there's one having one now. I suggest a few weeks at Cascade. What was all the leg shaking business? That's part of good morning. Most animal languages are a mixture of sounds and movements. A short snort means good. Shaking the leg means morning. Number one, Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, MASH. Nurse, you got a clamp, please? Uh, yes, sir. Why don't you this little, uh... Scratch my nose. Just don't. Yeah. There. A little, little harder, please. The landmark TV sitcom made Hawkeye Pierce a household name, but the earlier film version of MASH first introduced the character to an appreciative viewing audience. Oh, man. Hawkeye, you've got to remember. I'm married. I'm married. I'm happy. I love my wife. If oh, she was here, I would be with her. There is no married. question of loving anybody. It is a question only of you helping. You see, I made a vow to myself. Ribald, uninhibited, and cynical on the outside, Pierce on the inside was as caring and skillful a doctor as any person could wish. And if you will have observed anything, you will have observed that Major Frank Burns is an idiot. He has flipped his wig that he's out of his head, that he's a lousy surgeon. His laid-back, fun-loving persona masked the anxiety and terror he felt working in an army hospital and made the audience take him to their hearts in a big, big way. Hi, hot lips! You miss us? Na, 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 Do you agree with our choices? What other dedicated doctors of the silver screen should we have added to this list? For more clinical top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> yes, I'll get word to your wife. <laughs>